many bags do we have, Lee? <laughs> Lots. <laughs> Greetings from Deepak Koke. We met up with the, our Colombian collaborators. Uh, we have two students from Bordaca and uh, a Colombian from the Humboldt Institute. And tomorrow we're gonna start sampling some forest up the mountains over here. We are in the oak forest here, Quercus uh, Humboldti. And what we're trying to do is a 200 meter transect. We are sampling every uh, 20 meters. And basically we try to collect everything that is around our uh, transect point. So basically we're trying to collect everything from the bark, the soil, the rocks, anything we can see. Huge things. <laughs> That's amazing. <clears throat> yeah. So what myself and Pepe have been doing is looking for the big fungi that aren't lichens. So mushrooms, so we, things like this. Medium sized ones, we have some very, very tiny ones, and we have some that are a bit bigger. So this is a bracket fungus. So what we do with these is we have these, I think they're jewelry boxes or something, or they're meant for crafty things. So there's three layers and they have these little compartments and you can make the compartments bigger or smaller. So that works quite well for the smaller and the softer fungi because they're pretty protected in there. As of today, we bought some nifty baskets in the market so we can put bigger, chunkier things in a basket, wrap them in tin foil. That usually protects them. But it's like kind of like potato flour a little bit. Okay, it's day two of our fieldwork and we went to a dry forest. Uh, it was about 30 degrees and very hot in the sun and we collected lots and lots of specimens. So we're in the oak forest uh, again for a second time and also in this place we find this blue uh, fungus that it colors the, the wood all blue when it's rotting away and so far we had not found any fruiting bodies but look at this they're beautiful the color is absolutely amazing as well while we were just sitting here looking around we found these ones over here and you have to take a close-up of this because inside there's like these beautiful pores of this mushroom here. They're absolutely amazing. Diego and I we are collecting the lichens. In in this case I have in my hand a sample of a cladonia that grows on, on moss and soil. And these little trumpets that you see, we call them uh, podicia. They can have two two things, or either a podicia in the apothecia you will find the spores, so they will have sexual reproduction, or they can have just pieces of talus that break down, and basically these pieces break down and then they spread, and then they distribute like vegetatively, clonally. You will have the same individual spreading around. This, this is a known, known species, well, at least a known group, but also today we collected uh, something that we, we think might be a new, a new thing. We collected it from uh, Quercus uh, bark, from the oak bark, and most likely is the genus Lopezaria, but we are not sure yet. We have to do the microscopy and look at the anatomical structures inside this tiny lichen. We found probably three or four different species so far of mycorrhizal fungi. So these are the fungi that actually form associations with the trees and they form little connections to the roots of the trees and they support each other. Two of the ones that we've got to hand. This is a little thing called Cortinarius, it's called a web cap. And underneath the cap, before it opens up, it has a little web like mesh, hence it gets its name. Um, and these are very, very pretty. And I think this is a this is a different species to be found at the previous oak forest. We've also found this rustula. 
He's called Brittle Gills, and he's quite pretty. They have a very bright coloured cap and a white underneath. Um, and we've got probably two species of this, but this is the most common thing we've found so far. This red, dark red um, russula. And I've just seen one behind Pepping as well. Oh! <laughs> yep, perfect. Nice little ones. I did just how I do it here. Armigas! It's Ekramurmex, one of the two general leaf cutting ants. These leaf cutting ants, they collect little pieces of leaf, as you could see, but they don't eat those. They bring it to their nest where they have a, a fungus garden, and that's the fungus that they actually eat. So they eat from the fungus. And it's an it's a obligate mutualism, which means that the ants and the fungus cannot live without each other. They need to be together all the time. Okay, so the star find probably of the whole trip is a thing called Clathrus archeri, which is a squid fungus. Bright red fungus, looks like a squid and it stinks like poo. Um, and it uses that smell to attract insects that would normally land on poo and they spread the spores around. It's normally native in New Zealand and maybe Australia, but it's been introduced into Europe. But we found it here in some grass near some elms. Um, and two of our colleagues, Colombian colleagues here, have just found this which is the egg of one of them. So what happens, you get this squishy gelatinous egg form and then over maybe a day or so, this splits open and the squid emerges out of it. Just about probably 4,000 meters. So it's a lot cooler up here. It's a very different landscape to what we've been. There's very few trees, it's shrubby, grassy. It's quite hard going, it's a bit hard to breathe. Rizocarpon, uh -huh. the yellow rizocarpon and the grey rizocarpon. Mm -hmm. And then candelariella is the yellow thing. And then, esto que son umbilicarias o son... Mm -hmm. uh, Eso es umbilicaria. Um, umbilicarias. So, we set out a transect for the next plot in this beautiful area. Looking at these branches here in the Paramo, uh, the Paramo is dominated by Cladonias, it's Cladonia land. But I'm seeing at least three different species of Caloplanca. There are probably three new species. I bet you nobody has looked at that. These big tall things that look like palm trees, they're actually um, members of the daisy family. Uh, then there's Ferdejon in the local Colombian. Um, and they're a national symbol, and there are lots of different species of them all over the Paramo. Uh, and they grow roughly an inch a year. So the chances are this one here is probably well older than my gran, and quite possibly as old as my great grandmother would be. Open this. Yeah. Is that a crust or something? Today we had our final fieldwork day in Weinmania Forest. And for the macrofungi, it was the most successful day so far. We collected uh, 67, 67 specimens and probably 50 to 60 species. We have very interesting things. Yeah. This we teach you the titans. Leptogium philocarbum. <laughs> this is very pretty. Has this apotisia, the floating bodies that look like flowers, and then we have 
This is a peltigra. This, these are the fruiting bodies of the peltigra. These little fingers. And this is a cococarpia genus. It's very, very pretty. Um, on top of it is like another lichenis growing on, on, on top of this one. And is a um, uh, Normandina. Normandina pulquela. You'll see the tiny, tiny bright green lobes on top of this. We're sorting all the samples, we're sorting data. dried the specimens out of, in, overnight. They are now nice and dry and in theory uh, once we've finished what we're doing here they will last for uh, hundreds of years if kept in the right conditions. So we're just taking them out of the dryer, putting them into little archival non-acidic envelopes with their collection number on the outside. So when we take them back to Kew or we take them to the university, we can put a label on them and Bob's your uncle, properly created, looked after, last forever. So after a bit of a journey, we have arrived in uh, the labs. Um, Lee is washing some roots, Esther is sorting out the roots, and we have a bunch of students helping out. There's even a professor here from the university identifying all the plant species that we collected. Uh, for the end of fight. Yesterday we had a long day in the lab, uh, sorting out all the samples, the root samples and the end of fight. Everything went well. We're going to Fiji the labor to leave the samples there and finish up the databasing so they can uh, arrange the export permits for us and then send the samples back to London. We had an amazing trip, uh, many collections, we just have to wait until they will arrive in London so we can analyze everything and see how many uh, species we have and how many new species we have found. Uh, so it's gonna be a, a hell of a job but it was great. The trip was great, uh, Colombia was great. Uh, we love you all and uh, see you next time in, uh, in January, we hope.